Hello, most of you know me by now. My name is James Mitchinson, I'm the editor of the Yorkshire Post. And so the BBC has been in touch this morning asking if I could go on to talk about the Public Accounts Committee report out this morning on levelling up. But due to a family commitment, I can't make the broadcast. But I thought to myself, if the BBC thinks I've got something interesting to say on the matter, maybe I do, so maybe I ought to make the effort. So here goes. And I should warn you, for those of you familiar with uh, Jonathan Pye, I might go a bit Jonathan Pye on this one, so cover the cat's ears in case things get a bit spicy. Um, before I talk more specifically about the PAC report into the government's flagship policy, it should be said, uh, it's worth me reminding you what it is because, in my opinion, it's desperately necessary, made so by years of austerity, real terms, funding cuts to councils and public services, economic friction brought about by Brexit, whether you like it or not, and, and other issues well documented, not least the cost of living and energy bills crises. But in short, levelling up's about people's life opportunities. It's about fairness, it's about decency, it's about helping people in northern towns, but others too. Northern towns and cities live longer, healthier, happier lives. It's a commitment to offering the children of tomorrow the same chance of getting on and doing well whether they live in Blackpool or Chichester. It, it isn't just about skills, transport and jobs and all of those boring things. Uh, it's also about experiences as far as I'm concerned. It's about the theatre, it's about the museums, it's about the art exhibitions, it's about the music scene. It's it's the key, levelling up is the key that unlocks the door to better lives for everyone. And we mustn't think of it as a charitable endeavour, northerners in need, please give what you can, please give generously. Because it's not. But it feels that way, doesn't it? And you know why it feels that way? It feels that way because that's how it's been designed. And now, following on from the Public Accounts Committee's report, we've got the proof. It isn't just another chippy northerner saying so, it's Parliament. This report says that just 10% of the money that was allocated to this essential investment programme has been used. Just 10%. 10% of it making a difference. Let me, let me just give you a couple of lines from, from, from the report. The report says, The levels of delay that our report finds in one of government's flagship policy platforms is absolutely astonishing. Our committee is here to scrutinise value for money in the delivery of government policy, but in the case of levelling up, our report finds that the government is struggling to even get the money out of the door to begin with. It's damning. In other words, the committee is saying we sat down to analyse the impact and benefits of levelling up, but there are none. There's so little being done with nothing to analyse. Probably went down the pub. I was about to use the word shameful, but... There's no shame, is there? Because it was designed ever thus. You know, if Bradford or Sheffield or Wakefield or Halifax, if they have a legitimate case for levelling up funding, they have to bid against one another in a fight to the death, Hunger Games-esque competition. A game of prove who's more desperate. But desperation, need, necessity, they just don't come into it. Because as this report says, in black and white, in unscathing terms, there's no transparency. We don't get to see who decides, who wins and why. In fact, and you're not going to believe this, the report states that the rules of the game were changed halfway through without the players being told. Councils were spending tens, hundreds of thousands of pounds on consultants and lawyers to draw up bidding packs that were always going to fail because they were written against criteria the government ditched on a whim. It's unbelievable. It's infuriating. It's unfair. One thing we do know is this. In the second round of funding, two-thirds of the handouts went to Tory constituencies. So of the £1.6 billion given out, £1.1 billion went to Conservative-held seats. And by contrast, 475 million went to Labour held seats. Richmond got 19 million, Barnsley got 10. Go figure. Um, but we shouldn't be surprised, should we? Do you remember? Do you remember that clip of Rishi Sunak apologising to voters in Tunbridge Wells for allowing funding to flow where it was most needed? Do you remember that? He said, "We inherited a bunch of formulas that shoved all the funding into deprived urban areas." Huh? Yeah. 
and that needed to be undone, he said, and I started the work of undoing that. So there you go. Leveling, leveling up's a facade, it's, it's a distraction. It's, a, it's an earworm designed to con us into thinking someone cares about how few opportunities there are in life for the children of tomorrow in those left behind communities. It's not everywhere in the North, of course it's not. But there are so many left behind communities, communities deindustrialized, dehumanized and discarded by the wayside. But don't worry, Barnsley, don't worry, because 235 million has been allocated, branded a Network North project, Network North, to improve the roads. Oh, no, 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 not for Barnsley, don't be daft. That 235 million for potholes in London, a Network North project. You couldn't make it up.